So the next thing we want to do is um, get the user's value, basically what value the user wants to search for. And we have a function for it, which is get user account number. And so I'm going to call that function get user um, just user get user well let's call this also get user charge account number just so again we are consistent consistent with our naming we don't change anything it's just a name <coughs> sorry it's just the name we're changing so it doesn't really affect anything we just need to refer refer to it here when we're calling it so this is going to be get user charge account number now we know this function it doesn't accept any arguments but it returns the user's charge account number so when it's returning it, we need a place to to, to start. So I'm going to create user a variable called user charge account number, which is going to receive whatever is returned um, from this get user charge account number function. It doesn't matter the names are the same again. They're considered different because you're in two different functions. They, they, they don't see each other at all. All right, so we have the user charge account number here. Now we need to check to see if that user charge account number exist in this list and we have a function for that called um, called user charge account number exists right so the way we you know the way we're going to do this is let's see here yeah so we're going to use it this way we're going to create an if statement okay and say if the user charge account number exists okay that's a function that function needs two things. It needs the user charge account number, which we'll have stored here. So I'm going to pass to pass it to it. And it will need the charge accounts list, which we have here. So I'm going to pass that also to it. And this is exceeding the line here. So I'm going to break it. Before I break it, I type in a backslash and hit enter. <coughs> All right, sorry about the, the cough. I don't know. All right, so. If the user charge accounts number exists, we know we know this is going to this entire function call is going to return a true or false, and we know for if statements if the in the expression here which is, is results to true, then what's in the if section runs, and if it results to false, then what's in the else section runs. So if user charge accounts number exists, we know this is going to return true or false. If it exists, then let's print out the message saying that the charge account number exists. Actually. Because we have access to the charge account number, we can actually display it in our print statement. So we're going to say this particular charge account number, and we're going to say exist in. And because we have our file name, we can also use it in our print function. Exist in. You can say charge accounts of txt. Else, then we print out a different message, saying. That user charge account number does not does not exist. Oops, does not exist in charge accounts at txt. Oops, I didn't need easy call sign. I didn't need easy call sign as well. I don't know where. I, I think I copied it all the way here. Okay, all right. So I think we are we are done for the most part. Um, for the most part. Okay. So now if we run the program, nothing nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to happen because we've only defined functions and we haven't called any of them. Okay. So we need to call them for you know for, for you know for, for them to you know for them to be to execute. Now even though the main function is calling these other functions, the main function is a function itself and we need to call that in order to call these other functions. And so I'm going to call the main function here. And that's going to now start calling these other functions. So let's run it to see if we have any errors. Okay, so so far not not any error. So please enter the charge account number to search for. Well, there's going to be a problem. So let's fix that. Um, over here, when we have the charge account list, let's print out the content of the charge account list because we read the contents from the charge account file to the charge account list. I want to print out that list to see what's stored in it. So let's print out charge account list when we run our program. Oops. Okay, so let's run it again. And this is our list. <coughs> so our list contains the numbers all right, but it contains a number and a backslash n and a new line character. The number and a backslash n and a new line character. 
So this is how the numbers are stored in the file. We just don't see the new line character. As a matter of fact, the new line character is what's causing these numbers to be displayed. Um, oops, there's the question. All right, so the new line character is what's causing these numbers to be displayed uh, vertically. So we have the number, and what's causing the next number to be displayed on, on, on the next line is the, is the new line character, because the new line character moves the position after printing out this number, after, have, after this number, there's a new line character at the end of it. We just don't see it. But it's causing the next line to be printed from the next line going. It moves the position from the end of this line to the beginning of the next line. That's what a new, new line character does. And then we have our next next number. It moves the position from the end of this line to the to the beginning of the next line, and then the new new number, and so on and so forth. So when we are also reading from this from this file, we are reading the number not not just the number. We're reading the number and the new line character that we don't see, and that's it here. Okay. We don't want that. If we are searching for numbers in this list, we're going to, if, for example, if we type in this number to search for. It's going to say that number doesn't exist because what exists is the number together with the new line character. We, we need to we need to get rid of these new line characters so we can store just the numbers in a list. All right. So over here in our function where we are reading charge account number to list, when we read a particular charge account number, okay, when we read a particular charge account number, before we append it to the list, before we append it to the list here, we need to get rid of this new line character. Okay. So read a charge account number. Before we append it to the list, I'm going to call a function called, um, or basically a method called rstrip. Okay, so all if all file, uh, so the file object has you know this function, this method, or a method is basically a function that belongs to an object, right? So the file object, uh, which which in this case will be our charge account file. You know it has a function which basically is a method right it's, it's a it belong it belongs to this object called our strip okay which basically strips what's on the right of, um, of, of, a, of a particular you know value that you've just read from the file <coughs> sorry so before we append this number to the file sorry sorry to the list before we append this, num this number to the list let's strip that new line character from there so we get the number and over here, I'm going to call charge account number. Hold on. Yeah, charge account number dot r strip here. And r strip means strip from the right. Okay, strip from the right. This number, this this new line character here is on the right of this particular value. And so, what are we stripping from the right of this? We are. It has to be exactly. You know, you have to specify exactly what it should strip from. Or strip. In this case, we want to strip. Anything that looks like a new line character, anything that looks like a backslash n, strip the backslash n from the right of this value, and then this and this function or this method here, this method is going to return, <coughs> you know, the value after stripping the new line character. So it strip the new line character, and it's going to return whatever is left. And so when it's returning whatever is left, we need a place to store it. I'm going to store it back in this variable, charge account number. Okay, so we read that number, we strip this value from it, and we store it back in this variable. We're replacing the, uh, we're replacing what was already there with a new value without the backslash n, and then now we append it. Okay, we append it to our list. So let's run our program to see if it changes. And we can see that it's it stripped out the new line character from there. So now we have just the row of values in the li in the list. Okay, for now, let, let's keep the list displayed because well, this is where we are printing out the list. Let's, let's keep it displayed so we can know that. You know, oh, actually, we have the file here too, uh, but let's keep it open just so that <coughs> we have some kind of. Um, you don't have to go go back to the file, but okay. So let's enter. Let's say one. We know one doesn't exist, so we're expecting the program to say that one does not exist in charge accounts or txt. So let's run it. Hit enter. And it says one does not exist in charge accounts of TX. Now let's enter a number that actually exists. Let's try this number. So I'm going to run the program again. Please enter a charge account number to search for. I'm going to provide this number here. Hit enter. And it says this number exists in charge accounts of TX. So it's, it's working. Let's try again. Let's try, let's say, this number. But let's change the ending 
uh, let's change the 4 to let's say a 6 and then hit enter and it says this number here does not exist in the chart account of TX let's try one more time with a value that exists let's try this number here hit enter and it says this number exists in chart account of TX so we're done all we have to do is just remove we don't have to display this so now it looks it looks good so paste that number again well, let's just look for a number from the file same thing so let's see we want to check for the user types in this valley here which we know exist hit enter and this number exists in chart account with txt so we're done now you can go ahead and create a space in between uh, the output uh, but you know that's that's up to you <coughs> okay so we're done if you have any questions please comment down below and i'll do everything to respond to them thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves and i'll see you next time with the next program. All right then, bye-bye.